Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about an, a transition effect inside of 3JS. Let's jump right into it. This is borrowed heavily from an example on the 3JS website uh, created by Fernando Serrano. I hope I'm saying his name right. Uh, and it features two different scenes which are smoothly transitioned between uh, using this really cool effect. So I'm going to return it back to the state that looks more like the example, kind of like this. I modified the scenes so that it has the same geometry in the same orientation, so that when you do the transition, it appears that the, oh, the material just like grows on the object, and then it decays and disappears from the object. So there's like a coherence between the objects. That's not necessary. It's just a kind of a, a cool look I was interested in. I changed the lighting as well. Um, I added this hemisphere light. Let's make it a little brighter. And uh, let's make these objects a little bit smaller. Let's talk quickly about the setup. The example on the 3JS website is all a single HTML file with embedded JavaScript and shaders. And I found it kind of difficult to understand. I pulled it down, removed the stats and the GUI, uh, and, and just tried to break it up by function. And let's just walk through what I came up with. Here's the basic scene where we just kind of set things up. Um, there's gonna be a single renderer shared by all three of the scenes that are set up. Okay, uh, we got a couple of materials which the, the entire scene will use and this transition. So that's it, uh, this animate loop. Okay. Let's look at the FX scene. That's the first kind of scene that we're using. Um, all it's doing is creating an instance mesh. Okay, and then uh, in this case, it's an icosahedron. I could change that to uh, box geometry and change that to size size. And now we've got boxes instead of icosahedrons. All so cool. What if I made it a, a tetrahedron geometry? I'm actually not sure what that takes. Oh, it takes, uh, whoops, I'm making a mess. Oh, I see why it's confused. So a tetrahedron geometry uh, takes a radius, which will be size and then a, and then a detail. Uh, let's make it zero. Great, bunch of tetrahedrons. Also cool, what if we jack that up to 5,000? Wow, made them slightly smaller. And the effect comes on. I don't get tired of that. I could just watch that effect all day. Um, let's go back to the icosahedron. And the size is uh, 0 0.5. And we have 5,000 of them. Whoops. There we go. I kind of lost track where I was. This is the FX scene where we just take a material, put it on an uh, instanced geometry, and then we set up our scene. We're using this shared renderer. The render function's a little bit different because there's this frame buffer object, uh, a, the render target. I don't really know what I just said. I just know um, this is like a, I, I think this is acts as like a, a, a container for the render. And then you can, you can tell the renderer to use that container or another container. Or use that render or another render. I hope that makes sense. That's my very loose understanding of it. Um, this transition handles that effect. It creates a plane. It textures that plane. Uh, with those scenes, uh, at, at, or the blending of those two scenes. It uses um, a texture 
Here's a here's one of the textures. Here's another. Sorry to see it isn't. And here's another. That texture through some alchemy in this shader is transitioned to and from the two scenes. Again, apologize for the loose definition. I just know it works. <laughs> um, if you swap in a different texture, you get a different effect. That's all I got. The rest is just kind of messing around with those FX scenes to, to try different different things and, and see what looks cool. Um, I added this color transition effect. Um, you could change this to be set HSL and give it uh, math.random for the hue and comma 1.0 for the saturation, 0.5 for the value. And now we've got uh, a bunch of random colors. I use this needs animated color property when I set it up here. I only wanted the the uh, the, the the scene that had the material that's solid, the non wireframe, to have the random colors, because uh, otherwise I'd have random colored wireframes, and I didn't think that looked interesting. It's actually not bad, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted a single color wireframe. Uh, and maybe that wireframe is white. Like so. Also really nice. This example has code um, to set the background color as well. I think it's called clear color, yeah. And we'll make the clear color uh, an off-white. So that now when we go to the wireframe scene, it, it oh, it doesn't work. Shoot, I messed that up. Mm, not sure how exactly I messed that up. Let's see here. Transition, it's in the FX scene, a clear color. Clear color. Huh, I thought I did that correctly. And the index. Oh, it belongs in the scene. That's that's why I messed it up. Here we go. Off white. Now, when we transition to the wireframe, it kind of inverts the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Check this check this code out um, on the 3JS website as well as on on my GitHub. Play around with it. Uh, I'm going to try some other things with this too and see what I come up with. But uh, I just love this effect. I could watch it all day. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. See you next time.